What up? We're here at Hall of Flowers, day two. My name is Greg. Cannabis escapes. Pictures out of pot. This is Luke. We're here to talk about what's really happening in the California cannabis industry from people who were here before it was even an industry. Luke, how do you want people to know you? Um, as a grower, as a father, author, activist, um, trailblazer, musician, lifelong advocate for this plant. I think we'll stop then. All right, I think that's a great place to start. And at Hall of Flowers, what are we here for with profit? What is profit? Can you give me a little bit about an idea behind the uh, the brand genesis and the mission? Absolutely, absolutely. That it's a it's a longer story, but to to condense it down, profit is an indoor premium flower brand that's has super undertones of social justice because of what it represents. The tagline for profit is wisdom of the past, vision for the future. And what that means is we take some of those legacy knowledge and the, some of those legacy roots and bring them to the market now because I feel like that's where we lost a lot of the connection of a lot of the community that used to be in the dispensaries and how it used to look. Everybody used to come there. It used to be like rock stars and rappers and athletes and, and the mom and pop and everything. You know what I mean? It was an eclectic community that used to come to the dispensaries. And that's what we represent, man. We represent that community that used to be one that represented the whole industry. And now that's kind of been the community that's kind of been shifted off to the side. What was your first experience with the industry of cannabis? And is that, I believe Hall of Flowers, this is your second one. The first one was in Santa Rosa. And what was that event like? And then talk, talk about what that year since has been like. Um, the, the Hall of Flowers up in Santa Rosa, I had been out like a few weeks. So I really didn't like, I was more like, you know, like a deer in headlights walking around when I'm walking around the first one, right? And then, you know, Santa Rosa, listen, I love the people of Santa Rosa. I love the town of Santa Rosa, but it was gloomy. It was cold. It was kind of misty. You know what I mean? It wasn't like this, like right here, this experience down in Ventura, we are literally like a rock throw from the beach. You probably, you might even be able to see it behind us, but like literally a rock throw from the beach. You can see the ocean. We're out here in the sunny SoCal weather. All the brands are out here activated. Dope parties last night. All the brands showing what they're doing and stuff like that. And it's just really impressive to see the transgression of not only where I was and where the industry is now, but even in that year. You know what I mean? That's just mind blowing. What was one of the biggest lessons that you learned in that last year? Wow. Uh, or even while, while that was percolating, what, what's the uh, achievement that you're the most proud of in that last year? Being a dad, being a dad, straight up. Um, and you know, it, all the things, is, it, it's, it's hard for me to say like, outside of being a dad, what is the thing I was, you know, most proud of or, or the biggest accomplishment because the podcast, Joint Forces with Luke Scarmazzo was a big deal for me to be able to have a platform to say, to, to talk, just smack and do, do what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Profit is a brand that really means something to us. 10% goes back to the people who are still incarcerated. So we're saying that, we're stating it, we're stating a number on it because it really has to be done. And we're gonna be putting our money where our mouth is because until it's done, we're gonna be one of the people, one of the brands that are screaming from the, from the rooftops about all the men and women who are still incarcerated for cannabis. So that's, you know, one of the things I'm most passionate about. And then just having these platforms and these abilities of being able to come up here and vibe with you and chill with you and have people say, hey, look, we'll fly you down there to be able to go talk shit with Greg and, and sit in front of a camera. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that is like, this is work. Like people pay us to do this in this industry and it's a blessing because a year and a half ago, I was in solitary confinement in Yazoo City, Mississippi. And it, trust me, it's not bright in there like this. It's not sunny and they don't have good with either them. I feel like you have a perspective that I'm never going to be able to understand in the industry and in what's what's happening with cannabis. Is there a way that you can articulate so I can just even scratch the surface on what it's like to have been involved, to have that ability stripped, and now to come into this new world? Right. It's like a time warp. To put it simply, it's like going from a time warp like 20 years ago. Um, so... It's the last year I've, it's been like a crash course for me, right? I had to condense like a decade worth of knowledge within 12 months. And it's been a thrill ride and I made a bunch of mistakes and tumbled down the hill a few times, but it's all right. You know, I mean, it's part of the learning process. And 
the thing that I really, the, re the really thing that I can see is the, the biggest suffocator to the industry right now is taxes. If we can get up on and look, I'm gonna just go on the on the record right here, Governor Newsom. We want this industry to work. Please stop overtaxing it. Stop suffocating the industry. If you tax this like a regular commodity, I know that is a crazy concept. If but if we just tax this plant like a regular commodity. The industry will flourish and you will see a billion dollar industry be able to fill your tax coffers. Straight up. I mean, we know it, it makes sense. Unfortunately, I think that the reason that it's not being done is because of all of the things that cannabis as a plant uh, access furthering makes a lot of these systems harder and harder to perpetuate because right. it's like we're saying we lower taxes, like where's the money going to come from? Well, you don't have to spend as much money on enforcement. You can focus those, right. that revenue on other things and it's a, it, it balances. Well, and the pool gets bigger, right? So now all of our friends who are in the traditional market right now, right? Who don't want, who can't come in, not that they don't want to come in. They cannot come into the market because they cannot survive in a market and pay those kind of taxes, right? So it entices all these other industry guys to come in, right? And the traditional market people to come in. And when they come in, it raises your pool of tax. So now your pool, say, for example, 100 operators, now turned into 1,000 operators. And look what your tax dollars did. It multiplied by 10 to So taking that, have you had many conversations with some of these larger entities in other states that are operating like a limited license location? Like there, there's only so many licenses in the state like Florida or, right. or New York, and they're still going to be wanting to get your story right You're like truthfully like there's an and there's an angle from what you've experienced which is very attractive to people who want to market themselves right. as being involved how do you kind of suss out who who is a real partner versus who's somebody who wants to make a name off of your story because you have to go in there and you have to meet them i gotta look them in the eye i gotta look at what their what their what their body language is what their words say and what their 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 face is saying to me all those things matter. And the partnerships in those other states, like our goal is to go and expand, right? And get into other states. Everybody wants to do that. We want a bigger piece of the pie, but the partnerships have to be right. If the partnerships aren't right, it kills the brand. It kills your story. It kills your vibe, right? And it's not, you're not able to do those types of things. So, you know, my advice would just be go in, make sure that the partnership that you meet with is right for you and your brand. And if it is, pull the trigger. Don't be scared. Listen, get what's yours. You are a valuable company. You are, a, whether you're social equity, justice impacted, I don't care. You are a valuable company. You are a valuable entity and people will pay for that value. So make them pay. Dave. My, I, I think that's like, it resonates beyond just that story. Like a lot of people don't command the value that, that they deserve or recognize the value that they've earned. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. And it's one of the things that I want to highlight and emphasize to the guy, men and women who come out of prison, that when the, a large, the, these companies and not just MSOs, all companies, when these companies approach you for these deals, Make them pay what your what your worth is. You're a valuable entity. They want to put your, their arm around you, and they want to be able to uh, say that they represent and contribute to social justice and activism. And if they if they are going to put their money where their mouth is, well, then, hey, cut that check. As somebody who's had a substantial portion of their life not where where having doing what you want to be doing is taken away, and now the it feels like you'd be you'd be pressed to try to make up for lost time being out here and try to rush the business forward and right. catch up. But it sounds like you have a very measured approach Absolutely. to what you're doing. And I have seen cannabis companies where they're doing what they think they're supposed to be doing rather than what they know to be doing. So how do you maintain staying on your timeline, even though other people might be trying to, to change that timeline? It's a marathon. It's not a race. Straight up. Shout out Nipsey. It's a marathon. It's just so hard to to yeah. stay focused, stay in the lane with blinders on, with all of the distractions going on. Like for me, this is a land of distractions. Like it is. it's a, it's it's shiny things, and it's look over here and being over in the area where they have the art out for uh, the 
Freedom Grow Foundation. I'm watching people walking around like wearing designer clothes and Gucci sunglasses and they think that that's the flex. And I'm like, no, man, the flex is art and activism. Right. Hey, this shit is all fucked up. We need yeah. more people in this building going to your book signing, not following celebrities around, yeah. hoping that they'll turn around and like take an awkward selfie. Right. Well, you know, I think we're, we're starting to see it. We're starting to finally see that that shell be cracked open. Shout out to Hall of Flowers for having a social justice presence here this year. And I believe we're gonna see it grow, Greg. That's where it's hopeful for me. I see, I see the beginnings of something that can be really beautiful here. And you know, it's just those type of situations and those relationships are what we need to continue to, to flourish and continue to put energy towards and shout out to shout them out when they do them. These are things I needed to hear. Like, I'm asking you questions not for people at home necessarily, but like, I want to know the answer. How do you stay on mission when the temptations start to turn? Okay, well, to I'll give you a good example. So, we opened at the Melrose Cookie Store on a Saturday. That was a Saturday morning. We had to drive down Friday from Modesto or from Sacramento. So, those of you who, who know the distance, it's like a six hour drive. We drove down, we opened in Melrose. That night was the first smoke of the day reunion party, right? My bros, Black Leaf and Pat God, the, you know, they throw a huge function over there. Everybody was going to it. We wanted to go to it, but we had to open the Antioch Lemonade on Sunday, the next day. I had to get back in the car from Cookies Le or from Cookies Melrose, drive up to Antioch, up to the Bay Area, and go open another store that next day. It's about grinding and getting this money. You know what I'm saying? You're Listen, you are not getting a second chance at this. This is it. This isn't a N Nintendo game. You don't get a reset button on this. So when you have these opportunities, you can go kick it. You can go party and go smoke with your homies. Or you can go open stores and grind and do your thing and build your brand and build your entity. Because it should be an everyday thing. If your brand really means something to you and this movement means something to you, it's an everyday thing. You don't take days off. It's not a Saturday and Sunday, I don't represent profit. I represent profit 24-7. That's it. Well, I think that's where we need to end it. There's nothing I can ask you that's going to end the conversation <laughs> better than that. Thank you for your time, dude. Loved one. Thank you for your fucking dedication to the game and your fucking optimism, man. It, it, you, you give me... Uh, a shift in perspective to reframe this stuff, reframe the timeline, reframe my even opinion and reaction to the shit that I see here. Right. So when I see people who have dealt with so much worse, keep it even keeled and keep it positive. Yes, sir. It reminds me that I can do the same. So thank you for that. Yes, sir. Yep. That's a wrap on another Respect My Region conversation at Hall of Flowers 2024 on the beach Ventura. Luke, mm. thank you very much. And yeah. we'll do it again soon. Yes. Shout out, Joey. Respect My Region. Mitch, the whole team. Yeah, Ventura, California, baby. Later.